Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio, and we appreciate your patronage. I am looking at a story from a website called Get Out. I don't know if there's an actual magazine attached to Get Out. Get Out is not about dumping that bitch. That would be a great magazine. Get Out magazine. A magazine about guys who kicked that bitch out the door. Get Out magazine. <laughs> no, no. This is a uh, magazine that purports to be, it says here, Arizona's premier entertainment guide. I'd like to know what the penultimate entertainment guide is in Arizona. But uh, Get Out seems to be Arizona's premier entertainment guide. Far surpassing, say, New Times or the Arizona Republic. It's the premier entertainment guide. So, a um, number of you sent me this article from Get Out's website, which is getoutaz.com. And... Um, here is the uh, piece written by Kelly Wilson for Get Out Magazine. But it says here, Arizona's premier entertainment guide. The tall man with a goatee is still sporting shades. Even though the sun set several hours ago. He's attired in a Von Dutch shirt and jeans and he sips a red martini while eyeing the packed dance floor at Scottsdale Dance Club Mist. Jackie Wellington points to the man, guessing he's, quote, a $30,000 millionaire, which uh, is an office jockey who makes less than $40,000, but dresses and acts like he makes much more. On this Friday night, Mist is filled with men sporting brand names like Armani and Christian Dior. You can spot them, says Wellington, 30 of Awatuki, foot, Awatuki Foothills. He has the I'm money look. But I would bet $100 that he doesn't make more than $35,000. Wellington approaches the man and returns a few minutes later with a big smile on her face. He's a car salesman for Honda, she says, laughing. A $30,000 millionaire for sure. Says here that in Scottsdale especially, these $30,000 millionaires are as common as fake Prada. And for your price, a 23-year-old cocktail waitress at the dance club E4 says she often encounters them at the chic night spot. When people come in and the first words that come out of their mouth are, don't worry, we'll take care of you, then you know right there that they're a $30,000 millionaire, she says. You know, if somebody says, don't worry, we'll take care of you, that's a mora. See, I'm a multi-millionaire and I would not spend 10 cents on you. There. She says they're pretty easy to spot nowadays. They're the guys that wear every single name brand possible. They're flashy, they drive more expensive cars than their houses. Price recalls a man who ordered bottles of vodka all night. He was basically running us crazy that night, and we didn't have time to work any of the other tables, she says. Then he ended up walking out on his bill. The bill did get taken care of, but there was no tip at all. Story goes on to say it's not unusual for $30,000 millionaires to order champagne, the most inexpensive brand, of course, and then use the empty bottle as an accessory, Price says. They will not let us take it from the table, she says. They just want all the empty bottles to sit there, and they'll carry it around with them. Okay. Gary Johnson, a director at Tempe's DFA Credit Counseling. Says he frequently comes across men who have piled up sky-high credit card charges with excessive shopping, dining, and clubbing. For many people, that outward expression of who they are, that image, is everything. And they'll spend whatever they can lay their hands on to do that, he says. 
We see people who are spending more on vehicles than they are on houses. There are people with $800 car payments and $500 rent payments. It's because these people want to get laid. And by the way, they wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't working. These girls who say they can spot these guys anywhere. <laughs> you couldn't talk to the girls who can't spot them anywhere because they're busy uh, slurping on some guy. <laughs> they're too busy doing that. That's where most of the chicks are. Chicks buy into this stuff. They do. Johnson says some of his clients dish out $150 every weekend on entertainment alone. I know I'm in trouble when the client hands me a bill and says, here's my platinum visa and here's my super gold VIP card, he says. What's happened is those credit cards have become part of their identity. Craig Foote, president of downtown Scottsdale Gallery Art One, says he often comes across $30,000 millionaires. We get a lot of people in here who act like they have boats of money, but they never buy anything, he says. They come in and put things on layaway, then take it home and make three to six months of payments, then they can't afford to make the payments, but yet they come on a BMW. Foot says $30,000 millionaires are browsers more than buyers. He says there are a couple of guys who come in here who are in their mid to late 20s. They always come in here with the newest fashions, the newest haircuts, and they can barely afford their car payments. Foot says the gallery once had to repossess an $1,800 painting from someone who couldn't afford the monthly payments. He says they had a Range Rover. And you went to their place, it was like, oh, my God. It was kind of a ridiculous bachelor pad. I expected it to be a really nice place, but it wasn't. It was an apartment. Imagine that. Guy living in an apartment. How unbelievable. Stephanie Kingman, a 28-year-old club goer, is always on the lookout for $30,000 millionaires. They're a big letdown, says Kingman, a Scottsdale resident. At first, you think you're talking to a guy who makes a lot of money. They come at you with polished lines, offer to buy you and your friends a round of drinks, and then stiff you with the bill. That actually happened to me once. I thought I had met Prince Charming when I really met a big cheapskate. I thought it was all about love, dear. Why are you worried about how much money the guy is spending on you? Should it really matter how much money he makes, sweetheart? No, we know what you are. Okay, he's a big cheapskate. In my opinion, dear, you're a big whore. Just an opinion. Marin McElhaney, an event hostess for Axis, Radius, Mist, and Suede, agrees. These are all clubs in the Valley of the Sun. They're all about trying to get free drinks, says McElhaney, 37. They'll drop all the names they possibly know. They're always looking for the hookup. They'll say, I have a friend who knows the owner. Can you hook us up? We do that. And we get hooked up. I'm a real millionaire, by the way. Just, just in case you wonder. McElhaney says she recently went on a date with a $30,000 millionaire who worked as an investment banker for J.P. Morgan Chase. He talked the big game, she says, but when it came down to it, he was 35 years old and he was still renting. He didn't own anything. So you see, this is not about love. This is about gold digging. That's what this is all about. It's about gold digging. Then, uh, Get Out magazine here uh, on their website, getoutaz.com, they, they then give you a list of... And I haven't been uh, to Phoenix or Scottsdale in a while, so um, I haven't uh, checked out the club scene lately. But they put out a list of uh, it, they claim places where they claim the thirty thousand dollar millionaires party. And I'll tell you what, if I were the owners of these clubs, I'd be really pissed that I was included on this list. Essentially, they're saying these are the clubs where you'll find posers, and in reality, they're letting you know to stay away, right? And the clubs they list are Axis, Radius, The Crown Room, Devil's Martini, Devil's Martini North, E4, J-Bar at the James Hotel, Merck Bar in Phoenix, Mist in Scottsdale, Pussycat Lounge in Scottsdale, and a club called Six in Scottsdale. And the story goes on telling you how to dress like a $30,000 millionaire. Now, um, 
No place has more people like this than Los Angeles. Men and women both. People who lease their cars and they get the most expensive Mercedes or the most expensive BMW that's out there. Uh, they figure that if they lease, they can have the best car, whereas if they buy, they have to have a lesser car. People who buy houses much bigger than what they can afford with no money down mortgages or 1% mortgages or interest-only mortgages, whatever, without uh, realizing that it's going to take them 100 years to pay for that house. And uh, one false move and they'll lose it. And there's a lot of people who do that in Southern California or anywhere where hot chicks are. Because that's what you have to do to get chicks. And people wouldn't take these risks and people wouldn't be doing these things if they didn't work. They do work. Pretending to have money, pretending to be money, walking around like you are money, it works. And these people who are putting it down are saying they can tell. Even if they can tell, they're in the minority. That's why we always recommend on the program that guys pretend to be movie producers or screenwriters or doctors or lawyers. And if a woman gets taken by you, if a woman sleeps with you because she thinks your name is Dr. Shapiro and you're not, she got what she deserved. Am I wrong about this? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I think you're a sick bastard. Yes, I am, dear. But that's why they give me the big bucks. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show on 1-800-5800-TOM. Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Jeff. Good. Yeah, I was uh, listening to your last comments on E4 and that article that was written. It was absolutely hilarious. I was actually down there last weekend, and uh, it's exactly like you say. It's uh, you know the girls go around. Bunch of gold digging sluts. Exactly. First thing they ask you is how much money you make and what kind of car do you drive. Yeah. And of course. So, so why there. shouldn't guys fake it? There's no reason not to. I love how it's okay to be an out and out whore. But when a guy tells a lie about how much money he makes, I mean, why should a woman be able to expect to get that money anyway? Well, I think they're upset that we're on to them and we're doing the same thing they're doing. I mean, what do these women bring to the table except a vagina? <laughs> Not much, especially out in Arizona. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. No problem. Liz on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom! Liz! Oh, how are you? Great. I, oh my God! You have. I used to listen to you all the time in Phoenix, and you were just gone one day. No explanation, nothing. I'm so happy you're back on the air. Here I am in Phoenix. Yes. Um, no, it was just hilarious. My girlfriend and I. We were reading that article over at the Salty Senorita in Scottsdale on Sunday. It was before the Super Bowl, and we were just laughing. It was so funny. I, I have to agree with you. I, I, I'm amazed that women are indignant about this. Oh, it was hilarious. She's like, dude, if you sleep with some guy just because you thought he has money and found out that he didn't, well, joke's on you. That's right. By the way, if you slept with him because you thought he was a lawyer, an architect, a doctor, a cowboy, a highway uh, uh, patrolman, sure, tough luck. Well, you know, I have a friend out here who is actually, he is a millionaire, and he, don't, he won't go to Scottsdale anymore because he said that's the, what that guy just said, first thing out of their mouth. What do you do and what do you do? Oh, I, but that's the thing. See, I would go because I'd play those chicks like a fiddle. Well, you know what he bangs now? He's been banging uh, chicks from, uh, like, dive bars because they're just grateful, I guess, for a guy of his caliber at all. So. <laughs> but the thing is, what he doesn't understand is uh, if you've got money, you can play these girls because you don't have to give them the money. That's true. That's all you true. have to do is let them smell it. <laughs> By the time they figure out they're not getting any money and they start to say, you've already gotten what you wanted and you move on to the next victim. That's true. That's true. I just, so I just tell him to start going back to Scottsdale to the same old haunts, and I'm telling you, he'll get what he wants. He won't go. He won't go. He just said he just got I'll tell Scottsdale. you what, when Gary and I come to Phoenix, we're not staying in Phoenix. We're going to stay in Scottsdale. And you're going to... And yeah, we're going to play these girls one after another. <laughs> well, my boyfriend doesn't even have a car, so... Gary's got his uh, business cards that say, Producer, the Tom Likas Show. Print it up. Hey. He's going to hand those out. 
I got a uh, got card to say the Tom Likas show that my name, Tom Likas, that's usually pretty effective. And that's it. And then these girls aren't getting a penny, I tell you right now. <laughs> you think that'll work? Yeah, it's because... A business card? You think just a business card, period? That's all it takes. Really? Are you kidding? Now, now you uh, could not hear the show back when we talked about this, but you may have heard it being talked about other places, like The Tonight Show. We well, were how the, long have you been off the air here in Phoenix? I've been on the air in Phoenix since the beginning of January, so it's been about a month. But you were here years ago. Oh, I was in Phoenix in the 80s. I was on the radio uh, for three years in Phoenix. Okay. But I was listening to you probably about four or five years ago. Uh, well, this show was on other stations. Yeah, it was an AM station. Actually. AM stations yeah. with bad signals uh, or run by yeah. nuts or whatever, but... Oh. Uh, how stupid am I? I have a stick shift. I just parked my car and didn't put on the brake. My car is running. Oh, well. At least you didn't hit anything. No. God. Sorry. I guess I'm one of those airhead call up, right? Well, as <laughs> long as I tell you I'm Dr. Shapiro and you believe me, it's okay. Well, I'm a nursing student, so you don't want to come to where I'm uh, doing my clinicals, apparently. Well, probably not. <laughs> I'm just so happy that you're back on the air. Howard Stern can bite my ass. <laughs> like you so much better. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. I mean, it's the same type of show. It's a, it, it pretty much it is, but I do like you so much better. Well, Liz, I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Lee on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom Likas. How you doing, man? Doing okay, Lee. I want to know what you think about, what about the women who are faking it? What about the, well, I've got this girl that lives in my apartment complex. Okay, I know what she pays for rent. I know how she lives. But she's always got the top-of-the-line clothes on. She's got the top-of-the-line Mustang. She's always walking around with her high heels and flaunting around everything. She went out of town for about two weeks, and we had to take care of her mutt. Her house. Tom, I saw this apartment before she moved in. They redid the whole thing. It was beautiful carpet and everything. Dog crap in every corner, pee everywhere, panties underneath the, the pillow and all this kind of stuff. But yet, every time she goes out, she's all money, money. She's always trying to sue people for stuff, you know. So I'm just curious what you think about girls who, who try, to, try to act like they've got the money. Well, they're not doing it for the same reason. They're not doing it to get laid. If anything, they're doing it to compete with the other girls out there. I don't know. I mean, I, I, any guy worth having yeah, is not impressed with how much money a woman makes or what kind of job she has. I'm sorry, you cut out. You got bad reception. Here. Yeah, well, you got bad reception. I, my voice is sounding pretty good right about now. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? All right, Matt. I'm out here in Phoenix. I saw that same article uh, last week when it came out, and, you know, the first thing I thought was, whoa, you know, the jig is up. How are we going to keep doing this? I went out the, the next weekend, uh, worked like a charm. I mean, we go out there, me and my buddy, we tell these girls that we're uh, in acquisitions and mergers. It works every time. Because <laughs> women don't even know what that is. No, that's, that, that's the thing. They, they, they don't even want to ask. It sounds like you're making a lot of money, and that's, that's, that's the number one goal. So, I love that. You know, um, Wait till the that Tom Liga show gets to Scottsdale. Oh, my God. We'll have to go out there. Talk huh. to the client and think of these girls. Yeah, Gary and I are going to hit the clubs. Yeah? Yep. We were going we to go as far as that, you know, making fake business cards, too, but... Gary, really Gary, Gary's going to go to the club and say, I'm a producer. The thing is, he is a producer. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I, I wouldn't call myself a $30,000 millionaire. I'd say I'm up there in the $50,000 range being, you know, 22. It's not too bad. I do own a condo. I own a car. Different things like that, so it's not too bad. No, but here's the ultimate. Uh, here's the ultimate. Okay, you bring a chick to your condo, you tell her this dump. I'm just here while I'm waiting for my house to be completed. Ooh, nice. Over on Camelback Mountain, and then you yeah. go over there and try to find some house that's uh, under construction or some house that's uh, being renovated. Drive her by it. Well, what's she gonna do? Check with the real estate uh, registrar. There's my house right there. Yeah, by the time the house is done being built, you're hopefully you're not with her anymore. That's the idea. Yeah. This is what, by the way, and I've gotten reports from the front on this as well, this is one of the most effective scams we've pulled. Where you oh. take a chick to your place, no matter how nice it is, you say, this dump? Are you kidding? This is just temporary until I move back to my house. 
and then you show them some huge mansion that's being worked on or built somewhere. Absolutely. Uh, that, I mean, that is a panty moistener if you've ever seen one. <laughs> yeah. You know what? And, and sometimes we'll skip the clubs on the weekend. We will go do the do the dive bar thing like that previous caller yeah. said. And that works, too. They're just grateful to be getting laid, some of these girls out there. Absolutely. Everything's working like a charm. I mean, me and my buddy, we're taking girls back from the club, and we're, we're, we're both having fun. Love that. So, well, I'm proud to have you as a listener, Matt. Keep up the good show. Thank you. Appreciate the call. It's Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm okay, Ryan. Good. Hey, uh, I'm from Scottsdale, and uh, I'm 33. I've been uh, uh, did the club scene for quite a while. I got divorced and uh, hanging out with some younger friends of mine. We used to go to the club all the time. Right. And, uh, yeah, the, the girls are definitely out there. I mean, and don't get me wrong. Uh, these girls are pretty damn good looking. And uh, but if you're not swinging a BMW key or Mercedes Benz key around your finger and pulling out a wad of hundreds, uh, it's really hard to get some play from these girls. And you know the competition has gotten so hot with these girls that they've actually started moving east into like the Mesa area. Uh huh. There's some different clubs out there now and bars and things like that, and they've started moving out there. And Tempe is pretty much the same way. Um, they're, you know, because you got ASU right there, and I lived in, uh, by, right by ASU for about eight years yeah. when I was a kid. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, it's changed big time. Uh, there's a lot of gold digging women out there. No. A that, lot of them. That, well, again, if you want hot chicks, you've got to deal with the gold diggers because uh, they kind of go hand in hand. Exactly. And, uh, you know, li like I said, the competition's got so hot between them. They've actually started moving away from Scottsdale and right. going out to Mesa. Yeah, and you can play them against each other, which is great. Oh, yeah. And as I've always said, a good backhanded compliment never hurt. Uh, I've heard some of them. I... <laughs> the backhanded compliments are one of the most effective ways to make a woman feel lower than uh, dung. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I got you on that one. Like the, uh, uh, don't worry about, honey, about what they say about you. I think you look great. Yeah, don't worry about what anybody says about you. I think you look great. I think you look great. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I have a friend. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. I'm not even talking to him anymore because of something he said. I was defending you. Yeah. I'm not even going to tell you who it was, but trust me. Yeah, he'll, you'll never see him again. Because he was talking trash, and I told him where to get off. So it sounds like you're the big hero, when in reality, you're lowering her self-esteem because she's wondering, what's wrong with me? Yeah, exactly. What did he say? Exactly. <laughs> That's how you do it. That's a good one. Yeah. You know, I love older women. Call it a fetish. Love them. I, uh, I'm, I'm with a 22-year-old. Uh-huh. And, and, uh... Uh, I'm enjoying myself very, very much. Bet you are. Oh, yeah. She is. She's a good woman, too. Yeah. But especially good when, when you're there with her in bed going, on my 18th birthday, you were seven! <laughs> yeah, it is, it is a little weird, but, uh, you know, I've gotten over that, and we've gotten over that. <laughs> There's nothing time. weird about it. Hey. It's every guy's dream. I be 33 with a 22-year-old 20, woman. Yeah, you're right. It is. That's right. Um and you know, I, I got I was married for ten years, and I got out of it. And I got married really young, and and learned my lesson. And I'm not going to get married for quite a while now. So glad to hear do that. it again. Definitely, Ryan. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad you let the boys hear that as well. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. It sounds like you got the best job of them all. You betcha, baby. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas show. Likas. Tom like his show from Los Angeles at one 800 800 tom We're talking about something uh, some of the girls in Scottsdale, Arizona are referring to as the $30,000 millionaire. And I say guys should do whatever they have to do to get laid. Live on number 20, you have that's fine with me. one 800 800 tom He's our telephone number. Bud on the Tom Like his show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's up? Not much. Welcome uh, to Phoenix, or I guess I should say welcome back. Thank you. I bet you're glad to be out of the Westward Ho. You know, we weren't actually in the Westward Ho Hotel. 
uh, when I was in Phoenix. We were next door in the old Channel 5 building. Uh, the Westwood Ho Hotel, for people living around the country who don't know, was the hotel where they filmed the shower scene from Psycho. Yeah. Not the remake of Psycho, the original Psycho with Janet Lee. Yeah. It was filmed in that hotel. Did you know that? Uh, actually, I did, yeah. yeah. So uh, I was just calling to say that these chicks that are talking about the $30,000 millionaires, these guys may be fakes and everything. But these chicks that they're picking up or the chicks that are after these guys are nothing but, you know, fake breasts, collagen implants, hair extensions. So it's kind of like a give and take, don't you think? Yeah, well, uh, of course. I mean, these are uh, these are whores. Exactly, yeah. Whores. I don't feel the least bit sorry for them. With uh, the personality of Post, I might add. Yeah. So. Because we could okay. equally do an article where we could talk about uh, uh, how you could tell that a woman has fake breasts, fake hair color, fake nails, uh, that uh, she's uh, covering up all that fat by tying a sweater around her ass. We could write an article about that, but then we would be considered sexist. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, men have done such horrible things for so long. Now we're getting persecuted for it every which way. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Welcome to Phoenix. Uh, I used to listen to you in the OC all the time, so good to hear you. Thank you, bud. Appreciate the call. It's Debbie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Debbie. We're talking about all of these men that have to pretend who they are and who they're not, you know, and we're giving women a bad rap about being gold diggers, but there's some men out there that they set on their behinds and the women take care of them because they have the better jobs, the better stability. Well, the women do? Yes. Generally, those women are fat, old, or fugly, or any combination thereof. I disagree. I know you disagree with her, but I've seen it up close. Well, yeah, but no, that's not always true. I didn't because say the word always. I said the word generally, you see. The word generally is not, does not mean the same thing as the word always. Well, that's true. But I think that, you know, you need to also talk about those men out there that don't have to blame it all on the women because they can't. Do what they need to do. To yeah, but these, guys, but these guys in return are getting to be with the fat, old, and fugly, okay? So also, maybe there's a reason they they, they, So they are, being, they are being reimbursed for being somebody nobody else wants. I'm sorry? They're getting reimbursed for being with somebody nobody else wants. Well, hey, there's a reason for that. That's my point. Yeah, there's a reason that nobody wants the men or women. No, I'm talking about the women. Nobody wants these women. The reason they're supporting guys is because nobody wants them. No, I disagree. Why would any woman sign up for that? Taking care of some slug who's sitting on the couch all day. It's because she's undesirable. Well, why would it? Well, it's the same thing. Women do it for men that are slugs. Do what for and men? And there's a lot slugs? of women out there. Women do what for men who are slugs? slugs. Huh? Yeah, but that's all that woman can get, and she herself is old, fat, or fugly. No. Uh-uh. No Yeah, well, I want to see all these nines and tens who are working while their uh, husbands, who are threes, are sitting at home on the sofa. I want you to introduce me to one couple like that. I'll fly in to meet them. I bet you will. And I, I, I want you to introduce me to one couple. Can you tell me their name? No, I'm not going to disclose that. I'll give it. I'll give you to Dean off the air, and I will go meet them personally. I will go to their front door. How about that? It works that way. Yeah, I'll bet you can't name anybody like that. Stuff together in these. Uh, you don't know any couple like that. You're making it up. You don't know anybody like that. Oh, trust me, no, I'm All right. not. All right, hang on. I'm going to put you up with Dean, and uh, you don't hang up now. You're going to tell Dean the name of the couple you know, okay? No, I'm not going to disclose that. But I'm not. You're not going to be on the air. You can't disclose it because you don't know it. Yes, I do. And tell it to him off the air. No, I know, so I don't have. Sure, to you do. You're full of crap. There, there's no such couple. Oh yeah, there are. You don't know anybody like that. There are a lot of men out there that. Do not bust their humps to take care of their wives. Their so you're telling me that you know all these nines and tens who are with guys who are threes who sit on the couch all day? Uh-uh. <laughs> nope. Yeah, you do not. No. I'm no. not going to entertain this call anymore. It's such a load. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Brent on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, thanks for taking my call. I sure. appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, listen, the reason I called in, I had a couple things I wanted to address. Um... 
The uh, you're absolutely right. I'm in Phoenix. The, the uh, ten thousand or thirty thousand dollar millionaires, in, in uh, some cases, it's absolutely true. Next week, I was telling your uh, uh, the screener. I says next week. I'm 33 years old. Next week, I'm a virgin. I've never been laid, and I'll tell you the reason why. For I had a conviction about it early on in life, and then later on, I realized. All this was was uh, girls trying to play you. You know, they want to see, is this guy powerful? Does this guy have a lot of money? Does this? I mean, I only made, I was doing my taxes the other day, about $63,000 last year. But I tell girls, I says, I'm barely getting by. I, I don't know, you know, I look paycheck to paycheck. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to make ends meet. And I, I've never had a taker. Never had a taker. My friend who makes less than me, and I don't know about our looks or anything, but we're about equal. No problem getting all the chicks lies to him, and then all of a sudden he's, they're like, well, he told me this or he did this, and I thought, you know what, good for him because he got your, uh, you know, gold digging self into bed, and then you then we see your true colors, and that's, that's right. what they're about. All the stuff that you say on the show is true. You lie to them, and they will they buy that hook, line, and sinker. I've never tasted beer. I've never even had a beer. I'm the, I tell people, listen, I, I don't do a whole lot of stuff, and they go, oh, this guy, he won't do anything. Um, never had that. I don't go to movies. I don't dance. I don't do all of that stuff because that's what they want me to do. And I thought, if you don't like me for who I am, then uh, then that's the way it is. So I guess I could say that I, I, I'm not a liar, but I do lie about my salary just to make sure that, uh, that that's not what they're getting at. Good point. Brent, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate it. Appreciate the the work that you're doing here, and uh, and uh, take me out. I want to be taken out, Lacey Peterson style. Well, that would be tasteless if we did that. Emmer, hey, Emmer, Emmer, Mitch, you be good. Show Elizabeth, hello. Hey. Hey. How you doing? How you, How you doing? You? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Glad to be on the show. Thank you. Um, and I gotta say, I love this 101.5 free FM. It's awesome. Cool. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Good. So, um, I just wanted to say, uh, like, bring up the idea of like chemistry and actually like being into people as individuals and. Before we actually decide to engage in... Well, that's why it's good for men to lie and say we're doctors, lawyers, screenwriters, because that helps create a false sense of intimacy that women just latch right on to. I would not agree with that. Because men do not need intimacy. We just need your legs spread. <laughs> yeah. Really? You guys don't want it at all? You guys don't want some kind of like... Ugh, like First, we want to get laid. And that if we like that and we have a good time, then we might hear something you're saying. Oh, okay, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> what if, uh, what if uh, you could tell that guys are, you know, they like you and everything, but... Um... No, but the, when you think a guy likes you, what yeah. he's really, that, that look on his face is him trying to use his x-ray vision <laughs> to imagine how you look naked. <laughs> oh, really? Is that what they're doing? That's <laughs> what we're doing, yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. I mean, if, anytime we're pretending to care about your kitty cat or your little puppy dog or what happened to you yesterday or what you bought when you went shopping, that's all the price of admission. Admission to your panties. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm having a hard time accepting it. But, I know uh, that, but trust me, as a man, that's the truth. As, as a man named Mr. Tom Likas? As a man who knows a lot of other men. And, okay. as, and as a man who is like most of the other men I know. Yeah, 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 I'm hearing it. I mean, in reality, we got pals. We don't need any new friends, dear. <sighs> All right. What about a little love and compassion? And you can't feel that until I feel your thighs. Oh, really? <laughs> right. Okay, I think this call is getting a little too, uh, too intimate for me. <laughs> no, or maybe not. Or maybe not. <laughs> Our email address is my name. Write me. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.